Hi everyone, welcome back to another Step 1 review for Dermatology High Yield Clinical Presentations. Let's just get started. The first patient presents with very pale skin, eyebrows, and eyelashes. They are unable to produce melanin due to an enzyme deficiency. This is albinism. Albinism is a deficiency in tyrosinase. Next is a patient who is pregnant. They develop new pigmentation on their cheeks. This is melasma. Next is a patient that has random depigmented areas on the skin. They typically also have a past medical history of autoimmune conditions like Hashimoto's and type 1 diabetes. This is vitiligo. Next is a patient with greasy plaques around the nose and the scalp. This is associated with malassezia, which is a fungus. This is seborrheic dermatitis. Next is a teenager that presents with pus-filled bumps on the face. They can be treated with retinoids and antibiotics. This is acne. Next is a child with a history of asthma and allergies that develops rough patches on the inside of the elbows and the back of the knees. This is atopic dermatitis, also called eczema. Next is a person that's wearing a new necklace or belt that gets a rash in that same area where they're wearing the necklace or belt a few days later. This is contact dermatitis. Typically, contact dermatitis is considered a type 4 hypersensitive reaction that involves CD4 T cells. Next is a patient that presents with dark, flat, or elevated areas on the skin. Typically, this is benign. This is a melanocytic nevus. So this is the benign form before you get melanoma. Next is a male with itchy bumps in the beard region. This is pseudofolliculitis barbae. Next is a patient with silvery scaly plaques on the elbows and knees. These scales are going to bleed when they are scraped off. This is psoriasis. Next is a patient with erythema, flushing of the cheeks after being in the heat or drinking alcohol. This is rosacea. Next is an elderly patient with few brown patches that look stuck on, or it's a cancer patient with multiple stuck on patches on their back. Typically, these are considered keratin horn cysts. This is subarachic keratosis. Typically, there is an underlying GI cancer. Next is a patient with multiple sexual partners that develops skin colored cauliflower shaped papules on the skin. Typically, on biopsy, you see coilocytes. This is verruque vulgaris, also called genital warts caused by HPV. Next is someone who presents with itchy wheels that form on the skin and dermal edema. This is erythrocaria. Next is a patient who is exposed to vinyl chloride, arsenic, or has a history of mastectomy that develops red rapidly growing lesions. This is an angiosarcoma. Next is an AIDS patient that develops a red lesion on the skin. On biopsy, you see neutrophils.
This is bacillary angiomyotosis. This is caused by Bartonella. Next is an adult that has small red lesions on the skin that don't go away. This is a cherry hemangioma. Next is a baby that develops a rapidly growing red lesion on the skin that tends to go away a few years later. This is a strawberry hemangioma. Next is a painful lesion found under the fingernail. It's going to arise from thermoregulatory cells. This is a glomus tumor. So this is a painful nail tumor. Next is an AIDS patient that gets purple or red lesions on the skin. On biopsy, there are lymphocytic infiltration. This is Kaposi sarcoma. Next is a pregnant patient that gets red lesions on the lip. This is pyogenic granuloma. Next is a patient that presents with honey colored crusting around the mouth. This is caused by either Staph aureus or strep infection. This is empatigo. Next is a patient with a red area on the skin that is well defined and has sharp borders. This is erysipelas. Next is a patient with painful red hot areas on the skin and this is not well defined. This is diffuse. This is cellulitis. Next is a patient that has a collection of pus under the skin. This is caused by Staph aureus. This is a skin abscess. Next you have a patient with a deep tissue infection. It's rapidly progressive and on physical exam there is crepitus. This is necrotizing fasciitis. The crepitus is a popping or crackling sound underneath the skin due to a buildup of air. Next is a kid that has a discriminative rash sloughing off of skin when light pressure is applied. This is staph scalded skin syndrome. Next is a patient that has painful vesicles around the mouth the genitals, or the fingers. This is herpes. Next is a patient that has skin colored lesions with central umbilication. This is caused by the pox virus. This is called molluscum contagiosum. Next is a kid with painful vesicles in the body or it's an adult with painful vesicles on one side of the abdomen. This is varicella zoster. Notice how it's unilateral in nature. Typically, it's going to involve a dermatome. Next, you have a patient that has irregular white painless plaques on the tongue that cannot be scraped off. This is hairy leukoplakia. Next is an easily ruptured blister. Typically the oral mucosa is affected. There are antibodies against desmosomes and they're found in a fishnet like pattern. This is pemphigus vulgaris. So this is going to involve the oral mucosa. Next is a patient that has tense blisters antibodies against hemidesmosomes found in a linear pattern. This is bilious pemphigoid. This does not involve the oral mucosa. Next we have a patient with itchy vesicles on the elbows, IgA at the tips of the dermal papillae, and diarrhea after eating bread. This is dermatitis herpetiformis associated with celiac disease. Next is a patient with a target lesion on the skin, after a recent flu-like illness. This is erythema multiforme. 
Next is a patient with fever, dull eye, and severe sloughing of skin after taking a new medication. This is Steven Johnson syndrome. Next is a patient with an ulcer on the ankle. This is associated with varicose veins and status dermatitis. This is a venous ulcer. Next is a patient with an ulcer on the distal toe. This is associated with severe pain. The extremity feels cold, pale, and you can't feel any pulses. This is an arterial ulcer. Next is a patient with an ulcer on the bony prominence of the foot, like the metatarsal head. This is associated with absent reflexes, claw toes, and typically they have no pain. This is a neuropathic ulcer typically seen in diabetes. Next is a patient with a hyperpigmented thickened skin under the armpits, the neck, and the groin. This is typically seen in patients with insulin resistance like diabetes, obesity, and PCOS. This is acanthosis nigricans. Next is a patient with a rough patch on the face. This can lead to squamous cell carcinoma. This is actinic keratosis. This is typically a sandpaper-like rash that's going to affect sun-exposed areas. Next is a patient with purple itchy lesions on the skin. You can see white lines on the lesion. This is lichen planus. Next is a patient with a big patch that appears on their skin. Then they get multiple smaller patches that are going to be found in a tree-like pattern across their back. This is Patricius rosei. Next is a patient with redness and pain on the shoulders after a day at the beach. This is a sunburn. Next is a patient with a rapidly growing lesion on the skin that goes away. It appears dome-shaped and is filled with keratin. This is a keratocanthoma. Next is a patient with a new dark area on the skin with irregular borders, varying colors, they may have a past medical history of sun exposure. They might have been a lifeguard or a farmer. This is a melanoma. Remember, the most important prognostic factor for melanoma is depth of invasion. Next is a patient with a pink pearly lesion with blood vessels on the face. It typically is locally invasive. This is a basal cell carcinoma. Next is a patient with a scaly lesion that rapidly grows on the face. Histology will show keratin pearls and intracellular bridges. This is a squamous cell carcinoma. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. See you in the next one.